Thank you for choosing the Emotions and Stress Management lesson presented by Chestnut Health Systems Prevention Department. Let's talk about some emotions first. You know the basic words, happy, sad, scared, and mad. Did you know any additional names for these emotions? And did you also know that these emotions can grow over time or grow when you have a lot going on in your life? Take a look at happy, for example. Happy can also be called feeling glad. And that can turn into being ecstatic about something. Feeling sad is the same thing as feeling blue. If you're very sad, you may be devastated by something. When you get scared, you're afraid. If you're very afraid, you might be terrified of something. When you're mad or angry, and it overwhelms you, you might be enraged. We've all experienced these common emotions. Can you think of any other emotions that you've had? Boy, what a day. In one different day, your emotions can grow or change. You might feel like you're on a roller coaster. From day to day or by weeks or months, we might feel happy and then sad and then happy again. It's important to recognize warning lights and identify the emotions when they come up so we don't feel out of control. If you identify what causes your stress, it can help you out a lot. Managing emotions as they come up can be easy if you practice. We're going to learn some strategies that can help you. Here's the warning lights. How do you recognize when you have an emotion in you? Think about these different signals that your body sends you and think about what emotion it tells you you're having. If you have slumping shoulders, it may mean you're sad. A racing or pounding heart rate. It could be excitement. You could be scared. Blinking or tears forming in the eyes. That's a cue that you're sad. Laughing. Now laughing could be lots of different emotions. We might laugh when we're sad or angry because sometimes our body just gets a little bit confused, especially if we're overwhelmed. What about if your eyes get really wide? Maybe you were just surprised by something nice or you see something you haven't seen before. Tensing muscles can include a lot of different emotions. What about when your hands get sweaty? Does that signal that you're being nervous? If you clench hands or making a fist, that might be a sign you're angry. Grinding teeth or clenching a jaw might also signal anger. When your body shows you these warning lights, it means that you should take care with yourself. Find out how to deal with those emotions so they don't overwhelm you and don't cause you to make an impulsive decision. Sometimes if we get to the point where our hands are clenching or we're making a fist, the next step might be to impulsively hit something or someone. We want to avoid that. We don't want to hurt people or hurt ourselves or break any belongings. So take care to recognize the emotion. Don't let it build up too much. Deal with emotions when they come up and you'll feel a lot better. To recognize stress in your body, your mind, recognizing stress through your emotions and your behavior, take a look at this. See if you can figure out what you feel when you're stressed out. These may vary from person to person, and you might have other signals in your body for when you are stressed out.
let's talk about common causes of stress for students your age. A lot of students tell me that schoolwork causes them a lot of stress. It might be because you're worried about doing it perfectly. You might be worried about your grades in a certain class. Or maybe you just don't understand the assignment. That can cause a lot of stress in people. Some other students are concerned with family problems. Worrying about things you need can cause a lot of stress. A lack of sleep also causes your body stress. Bullying, illness of yourself or others near you, peer pressure or trying to fit in, making mistakes, and friendship. There's lots of causes of stress in teens. So let's learn how to deal with your stress. One of the easiest things you can try is to count to 10 or even higher if you need it. You can count to 10 when you're on a bus sitting next to that student that might be singing or annoying you. Count to 10 in math class, count to yourself. Nobody needs to know that you're doing it to try to help yourself manage your stress level. Another thing you can try that nobody needs to know you're trying or doing is deep breathing. There's particular ways that you can do breathing to slow down your heart rate, to slow down racing thoughts, and to help you feel more relaxed. You can breathe in through your nose slowly, pause, hold that breath, and then let it out through your mouth slowly. Kind of pretend that you are smelling a rose and pause and then pretend you're blowing out a candle. If you like, you can look up deep breathing activities on YouTube or the internet. Doing physical activities really helps stress management. When your body is fit and active, it just feels better. But physical activity like running, playing basketball, dancing, it all releases great chemicals into your brain that naturally make you feel well. You might also try journaling or writing about your feelings, talking to a trusted adult or friend, drawing or listening to music, doing creative things can also help with stress. Some people like to practice meditation. Now it doesn't have to look like the picture in this presentation. Meditation can be done sitting in a chair in your living room or laying in your bedroom. Look up tips on meditation on YouTube. There's a lot of those for teenagers that might be helpful to you. Guided imagery is also fun, something fun. That's when you think of something like your happy place or a beach or a forest that you might walk through. And in, when you imagine a beautiful place or you imagine something else, it transports you to a calmer feeling. Try some of these out and see which one works the best for you. It might not be easy to find which way works the best for you. You might have to practice them several times. Don't get frustrated with it. Keep trying. Taking care of your body is all about doing those everyday things that you know are healthy for you. Getting regular exercise. Being careful to pause the fight or flight response. Eating for wellness and getting plenty of sleep. When I talk about fight or flight, do you know what that means? Fight or flight is when your body feels like it's been startled or maybe you are under a very stressful situation. Sometimes it even happens if we're playing a very intense video game. Your heart might start to race and you might feel like you need to run away. We either fight 
or take flight from things that stress us out. This can be also things like bullying. You can pause the fight or flight response by practicing stress management. Try counting to 10 or doing deep breathing to help. If we constantly feel like we're in fight or flight mode, it can really be hard on our bodies. What is the harm? If a person doesn't manage their stress, they're at a higher risk for high blood pressure. They may have frequent headaches. They might have a poor concentration and it might be harder for them to learn. Substance misuse and addiction to substances might be more likely for people that are under a lot of stress. That's because you may make poorer choices if you don't stop to think about things. Poor mental health, including depression and anxiety, can also come. We've discussed emotions and stress management. Let's talk about how those things relate to things we do every day. Sometimes when we're stressed out or have uncontrolled emotions, we might make an impulsive decision. Being impulsive simply means that you're not thinking things through before you do something. We need to think things through so that we don't have negative consequences or unintended consequences. There is a helpful way to make good decisions where we can avoid those negative consequences. We can use STAR. STAR decision making is a four step process that's really simple to remember. The first step is to stop. You need to stop and clear your head. If you're very emotional or in the middle of doing something else, you could count to 10 or take a few deep breaths. That gets you ready to be able to think. Thinking is the next step. You can decide how to make the choice that will have a positive outcome. Think about all of your different options and how you can handle the situation you're in. Are there good things and bad things about your decision that you might make? What is going to be the best thing for you? Keep you out of trouble. Stay safe. Do something that is legal. You want to make the best choice and have no negative consequences. Remember, negative consequences are things like being grounded or getting hurt. The third step in STAR is to act. You're going to take action on the decision you made. The last step is to reflect back, kind of like looking in a rearview mirror. Did you have the outcome that you wanted? Would you do anything differently the next time that you're in that similar situation? Also things to think about when you reflect back, if it's a big decision, something that involves a lot of money or something with really big positive or negative consequences, you might reflect back for a longer period. What would you do? Using star, stop, think, act and reflect. If you're in the following situation, how do you think you could make a decision? Pretend you're in a mall walking and you look down to see a wallet lying on the ground. You look around to see if anybody is looking for something, but no one is there. What are your options? Could you do anything helpful with the wallet? Remember, you want to avoid negative consequences in situations like this. You don't want to get in trouble. You don't want your parents to be called. You want to stay safe. So what decision would you make? When you make decisions using STAR, you're going to be making better decisions and that will help you get closer to your goals. This next portion is for the questions for each individual grade. I won't read these out loud right now. You can pause on the grade level that you're at. They're listed as sixth grade questions, seventh grade questions, 
and eighth grade questions. At the very end is a list of resources that you can go to for further information on the topics. Thank you for picking this, this course today and I hope you enjoyed it.